So we're going to look at the formation of complexes, specifically those formed by EDTA to different metals. And so EDTA is this big molecule here on the left. It has six acidic sites, uh, acidic protons, and so the, there's four that come from these carboxylic acid groups, um, and their pKa's are listed here. Two come from the amines, and their pKa's are listed here. And so um, whenever EDTA forms a complex with a metal, it essentially wraps itself around the metal. And so each of these locations can form a dative bond uh, to the metal complex. Um, and so typically these complexes are going to have a coordination number of six, at least. Sometimes it'll be higher depending on the size of the metal ion. Um, and so for all of those um, bonds to form, these hydrogens are all lost through that process. And so because there's, I mean, so each of these have different pKa's, um, we can see that the pH is going to make a really big difference in terms of the fractional composition of the EDTA that the, these different forms. And so here we have a chart showing the fractional composition um, based off of the different pHs. And we can see that, it, you know, there's a variety of things that are happening at the different pHs because of the different pKa's. The one we're going to focus on is this teal line down at the end, which is the fully deprotonated form of EDTA. And so it's got the four minus charge on it. Um, and so the equilibrium constant for the formation of a, con of a complex with the metal with EDTA is based off of this form. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that none of these other forms interact with the metals. It's just that the equilibrium constant is specifically focused on this form. And so we can write out the equilibrium reaction so for generic sort of metal. And so we have our metal, we have our fully deprotonated EDTA forming a complex. And so, and so the, <clears throat> and we can write out the equilibrium expression for this with the product, which is the concentration of our complex divided by the product of the concentration of our metal ion times the concentration of our fully deprotonated EDTA. And so we're going to modify this just a little bit to make it a little to make it easier to use. And so we can calculate the fractional composition of just the deprotonated, fully deprotonated form of EDTA, and divide it by the total um, by by all of the EDTA. And so here EDTA is going to represent all of the forms of EDTA. And so this is all the way from partially deprotonated to completely deprotonated. And we just cross multiply. We have this form now that we can use to substitute into this equation. And so we come up with a new equilibrium constant. We're going to call it the conditional formation constant, um, K of prime, which is the fractional composition multiplied by the formation constant. And then it modifies this piece a little bit to where we still have the concentration of the complex on top and the concentration of the metal ion on the bottom, but now we're going to use the entire concentration of the EDTA, not just the fully deprotonated form. And so now we're going to try to use this. And so we have as a prompt to calculate the concentration of free nickel 2 plus in a solution of 0.25 molar nickel 2 plus EDTA complex and it's going to be at pH 9. And so we're, and so anytime we're using the conditional formation constant, we have to know what that pH is going to be. The formation constant's already provided for us, and so it's 10 to the power of 18.4, and our fractional composition is also provided for us. It's 0 0.041 at pH 9. And so, And so I've listed our steps that we're going to follow over here on the right. And so first we need to determine the, the our conditional formation constant value at the intended pH. 
And so our K of prime is equal to our fractional composition times our formation constant. And so that's 10 to the 18.4 times 0 0.041. And we get this really large number, 1.030 times 10 to the 17th. Next, we're going to set up our reaction. And so I'll label these over here. And so our reaction is nickel 2 plus reacting with EDTA to form our nickel EDTA complex. It's all one to one. So uh, because one EDTA is going to wrap around one nickel ion. And so we know that we're starting with 0.25 molar of, uh, of the so uh, the complex, and so initially we don't have any of the free, free nickel or free EDTA. Over time, some of this nickel, some of the complex is going to um, break apart, and we're going to have some. We're going to lose some of this concentration over time. While at the same time, we're going to gain some free nickel two plus, and we're going to gain some free EDTA. And so then. Um, at equilibrium, we can add our columns. And so we have 0.25 molar minus x plus x plus x. And so we've just set up, and we're still dealing with equilibrium, so I, we can still use these ice tables to talk about what's happening initially, what's happening, what's, what's changing, and what's going to be our equilibrium concentrations. And so then we can write our um, conditional formation equilibrium expression which is still products or reactants are complex over the concentration of our nickel 2 plus and our EDTA. And mind you, this is going to be the total. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. So we plug in these values into our expression here. And so our metal complex, 0.25 minus x over x times x, which is the concentrations over nickel 2 plus and EDTA. And then we have our conditional formation constant, which we just calculated. And so we could cross multiply and solve using the quadratic equation, and that would be completely uh, reasonable. We can also say, well, our, formation, our conditional formation constant is very, very large. You know, and so this this is heavily going to lead towards the uh, products. And so do we really expect this change to be a significant number? And so our answer is going to be no. There's not going to be that much that 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 comes off of the that breaks apart. And so we can say, well, this piece is just going to be tiny. Let's ignore it for now. And it simplifies this substantially to where we have. Huh, okay. To where we have the 0.25 over x squared. And so now this is a little easier to simplify. Uh, we can cross multiply and then we can um, calculate the concentration of the nickel, uh, the x, which is our nickel 2 uh, plus ion. And we get a number of 1.558 times 10 to the negative 9 molar. And so we have our concentration. But a useful value to have is this P nickel value, um, which is very similar to pH. And so if we say pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of our hydronium, we get our pH. It's the same thing. We take the negative log of our nickel 2 plus co uh, concentration, and it comes out to 